to be your mum and more for you and auntie more for you and today we're going to be making some soup that will feed the whole family so before you start you need to make sure you have a good size pot a cup of knives and make sure you have adult supervision if you if you want to um, a potato peeler or a, or a carrot peeler a wooden spoon and food water the ingredients you need for this are ground coriander honey you can um, use golden if you don't have honey oil, a butternut squash, two peppers, carrots. Now they, these carrots don't need to be nice carrots, they can just be any old ones even if they're past their best date. You need chilli to add some heat, some light heat, some ginger to add some warmth and to use some leeks. Now we tend to use frozen leeks as um, the fresh ones you get are most likely full of sand and you throw in the more you keep and then lastly you need any herbs of your choice so we're using basil and coriander. So the first step you need to do to make your soup is to peel all of your carrots and put your butternut squash. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting up my butternut squash and my carrots into 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 like pieces, and it doesn't really matter if you don't have them the same size, yeah, it, it, because it's going to end up being like a soup anyway. So I'm just going to start chopping. The best thing about soup is that you can literally there's no rules, so you can do put in what your heart desires. If you don't like chili or um, or ginger, don't put that in. If you prefer it more sweet, you can add some sugar or maybe some apricots, or maybe you can add in some apples that, that are maybe half their best, and that maybe sweeter. If you like hotter stuff, maybe add some garlic and some chili. It literally goes, and and also the best thing is you can have it for lunch or dinner. It's it's an all round meal and it's just such an easy thing to make. It takes what, five, ten minutes maybe? So right now I'm cutting up the um, pepper into um, halves pieces. And if you're wondering why I'm putting pepper and butter and squash carrots in the bag, it's because, it won't be, it's because um, I like to do it because you can pour olive oil on it and then you can mix it up. But if you don't have a food bag this big, you can always pour it, you can always put it in a bowl and then mix it up like that. And don't be tempted to use frozen butter and squash because if you use it, it will go into the oven when you like cook it. It will go into a mush and you don't want it to go into a mush because then it will burn and because it has such a high moisture content. And so it's always better to use a fresh one. And if you can't find a fresh one, don't worry because there is a very similar alternative which you can use because if you use um, equal amounts of carrot and parsnip, then it will give off um, a, similar to, um, a really good similar taste and also they're, they're so much easier to cook with carrot and parsnip than that squash. So now I'm just cutting up my pepper and now I've, I've just got to to preheat the oven to 200 degrees and you've got the oven baking tray. So now I'm going to pour in the oil and it may look like a lot of oil but actually most of the oil gets stuck inside the bag so you want a lot of oil so you pour this in now. If you need adult help or supervision doing this, do it. But if you 
well trained than just use some other gloves to make sure you don't burn yourself on the oven. So now we're going to set a timer for 40 minutes and we'll see you then. So, so now the roasted vegetables are in the oven and five minutes, um, five minutes before the end of their cooking time we are going to drizzle some honey over the um, vegetables. But don't worry if you haven't got honey because you can use gold syrup, sugar, white sugar, brown sugar, any, anything sweet to offset the chilli or saltiness. So whilst our vegetables are resting in the oven, we're going to concentrate on the base of the soup. So right here, we just cut all our ingredients. We've got leeks, butter, two whole tablespoons of oil, garlic, ground, um, nutmeg in a grinder so it's sweet so we know it's fresh, ground coriander, chilies, and garlic. No, ginger, sorry. And this um, uh, ground coriander in about one tablespoon. We use um, leeks instead of onions because onions um, give us a more harsh taste and, and because they're in the same family, leeks give more of like a low down, almost a subtle taste to it, so it's fine. And so with the garlic, we, we don't normally put garlic in things because my mum and my sister both dental nurses and they can't have garlic like before they're working because they don't want to be breathing garlic on people all day. But this is quarantine, quarantine cooking. cooking! So we don't have to worry about nothing garlic and stuff. Make sure your hops are on nice high heat and we're just going to place our big pot on and go, and go in straight in with the oil and the butter. So we're going to pour in our two tablespoons of oil. I am going to go in with my, my nutmeg into the ground coriander so that I don't actually drop it into the melting butter. And then we're going to go straight in with the dry spices so that they can mix with the oil. And we're going to stir this around for a little bit. We're going to go in with everything else. So you're going to add the garlic, the ginger and the chilies. And the leeks. These can still be some frozen. Turn this around now to make sure all, everything in this pan is lightly coated with the butter and the oil. And then I'm just waiting for three or four minutes so I wait for one. I'm just waiting three or four minutes and the vegetables are soften. And so now I'm going to talk about our stock. So, um, you normally would pour in vegetable stock, but because we don't have any vegetable stock, we're using chicken stock. And now to make this soup completely vegetarian, you would use vegetable stock. Or to make, to make it completely vegan, you would not use any butter. And so and because of the wider taste and the lovely taste of the vegetables, the roasted vegetables, you could do, you literally could just use water, it doesn't make any difference from just choosing to use vegetables well. Now I'm going to pour it in. Oh, lovely, very mix of chili. The stock wasn't enough. I'm, I've just filled up the same effect jug that I used to fill the stock with, with this plain cold water. And now I'm going to pour it in because because you need, you need um, the right amount of water to vegetables to make sure they cook. So now I'm just we're just going to leave this for about a few minutes to make sure it cooks and cooks all of the spices that are in there. And so after the vegetables come out of the oven, we're going to put these in here and they're going to cook for a further half an hour and we're going to add in the herbs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the herbs. You don't need to worry if you haven't got any herbs or any fresh herbs that you've grown because you can easily get some dried herbs or some frozen herbs anywhere like you get on the shelves in Tesco's or co-op. So now I'm just going to cut them off. And make sure with the coriander or any herbs at all, you cut right down to the stalks because there's so much good flavour in the stalks that you're just going to miss out on if you don't add them. So I'm just going to drop them in the pot and just let them sit. Stir them as well, just to make sure that, that all the 
flavour comes out of those lovely stalks. Why me and Joanna haven't done any seasoning to our soup yet? It's because we, we like to leave the seasoning to the very, very end because with all the other flavours going on in the pot, we're not sure if we're not sure if we are going to need salt or pepper because if say for instance it's we, we it's needs a bit more salt we would add a bit more salt and if it doesn't we would not add it. So now that we have five minutes until the end of the timer, you're going to take the um, um, the vegetables out, put them on a hot plate, and then we're going to drizzle the honey over it. Or again, if you don't have honey, you can use gold syrup, sugar, or anything you have that's sweet. Now I'm just going to drizzle some honey. So you want to take like a spoonful or so, and then drizzle it over the vegetables to make it a nice sweet coating and you just want to do that till it's all finished and then after it's all finished you just want to scrape down the edges I'll show you what that looks like when I finish doing this and you make sure you want to get all the vegetables all around the edges because most of the time people think that they just do it in the more they just do it in the middle um, because that's the, the most error where they like to do it but I do it well more just because some people forget about that so now you just want to as I'm doing here scrape down all the edges so that they've got another spoon full of that and maybe I can have a cup and now it can go back in the oven for the last five minutes and this can be the time uh, take it out and let it Time to work its magic and crisp all up. So I'm just putting them in. So now that all the vegetables are in there, you're going to stir it around and you're going to make sure that you are happy with the right amount of liquid. Once you are, you're going to put, place a lid firmly on there. Now, if you don't have a lid, you, you need to make sure that something's on there, otherwise, you, all the water will just evaporate. Um, so like you can put tin foil on there maybe um, now we're going to just go and turn the heat right down so that it's just simmering. If you turn the whole way down, you, we will leave that there for 20 to 30 minutes to let that oh, 20 or 30 minutes, you need to take the lid off and see if you are, if you are happy with the moisture. If you are, put the lid back on and turn the hob off. Now we need to let that cool with the lid on for 2 to 3 hours to make sure it's stone cold before you then go to lick it with the hand mixer. If you um, lick it when it's still a little bit warm, it, it, it could splash up and burn you. So just be careful. Now, we've left our soup for three hours, and so, as you can see, and so now we're just gonna go in with a hand blend, with a hand mixer, um, to mix it in. And you don't want to go straight with the Nutribullet, because then some of the pieces of soup that you have will be chunks of, or more bust, you'll have more bust nuts squash than carrot, or, or vice versa. So now we're just gonna go in with the hand mixer to use a hand mixer first, instead of going into the blender. So what, what you're going to do is you're going to tip the bowl forward so that it's more deep than it's than shallow and you're going to do small pulses until you're happy with the consistency then you can add some water or some more things if you need to if you need to so now i've listed um it's now a good time to test to see if it's if you need any salt or pepper so i think you need a little bit of salt and pepper, salt and, pepper. and now we need to put it in the Nutribullet ready to blend. Why are we time consuming? We want to do it in little portions like this. straight away or you could put it in the freezer uh, put it in the freezer or you could put it in the fridge for a week or so. 